Kirui asked the bishops, where is the integrity of the church? Why is the church the soft target? Does this mean the church has many votes or what? Can you please help? Does the church have many votes? Okay. Um, Dungu Chege says, politicians should attend church like any other congregant, worship and go home, period. Okay. Uh, what else do we, let's take one more before I read your SMSs. Abednego Haukwa, you say it's still too early for political temperature to rise. We should focus on how we can build our economy first. The church is the eye of the people and should stop getting engaged or involved in any politics. And uh, some SMSs here, remember 2242 is the SMS line. Someone says the government should ban politicians from organizing rallies in church premises. I'm not sure how that fits with freedom of association, uh, freedom of speech as well, so I'm not sure about that one. But one last SMS, Reverend Thai Yawole says, let the two bishops address the church and not the government. The church can collectively deny politicians political platforms. Okay, that's from Reverend Thai Ya Wallace. Okay, uh, let me start with Bishop Mark Arioki because we didn't have a chance to engage him a bit earlier on. Bishop, thank you for making time for us uh, despite the hour. And I began by asking Bishop Oginde to give a statement because uh, we hadn't quite heard whether it's from the NCCK or the parachurch organizations, a reaction to what we saw yesterday in Moranga, possibly to condemn the violence, to condole with those who lost uh, their lives, the families that are now grieving. I can give you one minute to do so right now, Bishop Karioki. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mauro uh, First of all, I would like to send my condolences to the family, to the families that have lost their loved ones. It is very unfortunate that uh, lives are lost at a time like this, and very young, very young lives. It's very unfortunate, and we pray that uh, that God will comfort them because it's only God who can comfort at a time like this. And then I would also say that it is also a disgrace. There's also a disgrace to, 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 to our nation for, for, for anybody to throw tear gas in the church. If the, if the tear gas was thrown in, into the church, that is a disgrace. And I think uh, it needs to be looked at and investigations done until those who are held captive uh, will be taken to will receive justice because a church is a place is a place of worship and not a place of politics not a place of destruction so uh i, I would like to say it's a big disgrace and then at a time like this this is 20 the 21st century 21st century these are, are, are activities that we used to see in the in the 70s and the 60s and the, uh, they shouldn't be appearing now so uh, I, 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 I pray that the authorities will follow, will follow that to the letter. Okay. Uh, Bishop okay. Karioki, you've, you've taken us back to the 70s, 80s, 60s. One of the, the, the vocal uh, voices then in the church was Reverend Timothy Njoya. And in a TV interview yesterday, he said, and I quote, the church is now selling its congregation to politicians. Could that be the reason why we are now seeing a political class very eager to make its way to visit houses of worship Sunday after Sunday? Could that be part of the motivation? I think it is important to realize or for us to know that the church, the church is not a, perfect, a place for the perfect. The church is a place for the sinner so that the sinner can go and repent and hear the word of God. And only you as an individual can hear the word of God for yourself. You cannot hear the word for somebody else. So you cannot change someone else until that individual hears the word and co gets convicted, then they can, they, can, uh, they can change. I think it is important to, to realize that politicians are sinners and they are, now get me right, politicians are, are need God. And you cannot chase them away from church because when someone is coming to church, you do not know what they are carrying. You do not know what they are coming with. You do not know what battles they have been going through. You do not know the sorrow they are going. I think you should understand the pastor, that when the pastor stands to speak, he is speaking to people who are hurting, people who have been fighting, couples who have been quarreling, others who are sick, and all this is not known. And politicians are not exempted from that just because a few politicians have abused that opportunity mm -hmm. can, we cannot condemn the church fully because of, as a result of that and i do not i do not agree with the, with reverend joya that the church has sold has sold has sold uh, 
itself to the politicians. No, we have, we, we have got to keep preaching the word so they can hear the word. But there are things, there are things that can, can be controlled. You, you'll be able, you can be able to say, okay, you are welcome to church, but there is no politics in church. The church is a place for you to feed spiritually. It's a place for you to be lift, up, uplifted. I, 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 and I think if we can put that to our politicians, mm -hmm. that, that, would, that is important. And at the same time, don't forget that the scriptures teach us to honor those who are in authority. Okay. So when you honor those who are in authority, you give them the mic. When you give somebody a mic, you have no idea what they are going to say. Bishop, Bishop Oginde, let me pick up from what uh, some of the things that Bishop Mark Ariuki has uh, stated on the program today. And let's look at the scenario. 2020 has been a difficult time for the church in general. Already, I can assume, many churches were dealing with the, the I, for lack of a better word, the tithe that they received to run their activities, bearing in mind we know the harsh economic uh, times the country has been going through. COVID-19 comes in, church doors are closed. We're not, I don't have exact data, but I'm sure a lot of churches have been affected. Don't you see a situation where church leaders would be tempted to think, if a politician comes and asks you, how many members do you have? Can I address your members? And I'm willing to offset some of your expenses by giving you uh, some sort of cash donation. Would that, could that not possibly be tempting to some church leaders in the country today? That's a difficult question, but um, you know, church leaders, as the bishop has said, are, have the responsibility of uh, serving the people who come to them, uh, irrespective of who they are and irrespective of what their needs are. And I think one of the things that is uh, very important, and I want to speak to us as church leaders, that the positions and the responsibilities we carry, we carry on behalf of God. And therefore, we should exercise that responsibility under the fear of God and the authority of God. Mm -hmm. So, like Bishop has said, on the one hand, the church doors cannot be closed for any category of people. The church is the place where everybody is welcome. And no matter how clean, how dirty, how rich, how poor they may be, the church doors are open because that's why Christ went to the cross so that whosoever believes in him, and the words whosoever means everybody. So there's no way we can say politicians cannot come to church because they are part of the whosoever who need God. But on the other hand, when it comes to the management of the pulpit, of the management of who speaks within church and who does what, mm. that is in the hand of the pastor, that is in the hand of the church leader, whether you're a bishop, pastor, whoever you are, in charge of that, it is your mandate that has been given to you by God that you ensure that there is order uh, within the congregation that you are leading. And so as a church leader, you have the authority and the power and the responsibility to ensure that the place of worship is not abused. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I was a pastor of a church and a congregation and our leaders, political leaders come in, especially of the stature of the deputy president, of the president, of the former prime minister, and the other senior political leaders in the country. Mm -hmm. It would look very odd if I, they came into the church congregation and I would, do not give them opportunity to greet the people if they are not regular attendees of our church. It would look very odd even to the members of the congregation that the president comes to our church and I don't give them opportunity to say something. But I have the responsibility of determining what they can say. And I have done this many times when we have had these kinds of people come to our congregations. I tell them what they need to say. And I normally add, and please don't play politics. That already is a warning to the person that this is not the platform that they should use for uh, talking politics, 
for abusing uh, of political opponents, like we have seen happening in various congregations. So and, and we are do they listen? Yes. Sorry for interrupting. Do they listen? I'm, I'm curious to know if they if they heed your oh, advice. Oh yes, they do. They do because politicians also have respect when you show them respect. Mm. And so if if I ask if say for example, and I've, as I said, this is not something I'm saying which I've not done or we have not done. When a politician of the stature of a president of a deputy president. Of a, of a of a former prime minister and that those kinds of people or a CS comes into the congregation and I feel I need to give them opportunity to greet the congregation. I will instruct them. I'm giving you five minutes or three minutes or whatever time. Please greet the congregation. If it is a president, anywhere where the president speaks, he not only speaks to the congregation, he speaks to the nation. Mm -hmm. And so I'll tell them, I'm giving you five minutes or 10 minutes or three minutes, greet the congregation and speak to Kenyans. But please don't play, don't, don't uh, engage in politics. And I can tell you whether it is president, deputy president, all these other leaders, they have followed that instruction. And so, I cannot sit there passively while politicians wreck chaos using the pulpit, uh, the forum that has been given for the worship of God. And so in that sense, I would call upon our, my fellow church leaders, mm. please do not allow politicians to defile the altar of God, which has been given to you as a leader to manage and to take care of. because. In the Old Testament, when you look at it, whenever the altar of God was defiled, it is the leader who was responsible and it was, it was taken into account by God himself. So there's a way in which we as church leaders have become beholden to okay. political leaders so that when they come in, then we release the church to them. And sometimes I've seen even in videos, the pastor is sitting there almost helpless, uh, like there is nothing they can do. Mm. You can actually wake up, tap the person, my, my, uh, uh, my former pastor used to do it, go to the person, tap them on the back, pick the microphone respectfully mm. and say, thank you very much for greeting the people. Uh, we now need to proceed with the service without disrespecting them. So we must take charge of our platform, okay. our congregation, so uh, that we don't see these girls. Uh, let me allow Bishop Karioki to also weigh in on that. Bishop Karioki, you spoke about the church as open to all sinners, even those in the political class. But in your years of experience leading various churches, when the political class come to you, when they ask you about you know, your advice on social issues, or when you notice something about them that you want to counsel them on, do they listen to you beyond what they say in the pulpit? Do you notice a transformation? Do, does the political class have such respect for the church that when they are told, go this way or don't go this way, they would actually listen? Uh, I think this would be taken on individual basis. Mm that when you talk to an individual, you, you, you talk, this individual will receive that or will, choose, will decide not to receive. You see, as a pastor, I can only talk and say, this it doesn't seem to be right. That direction may not be good. You, that, that, that you, may not, you may not say here. Now, for me, when I say that, I think I have, I have done my duty. It is upon the politician or the individual to capture that and weigh, because he as a leader or she as a leader is also accountable before, before God. So I can say with the confidence that there are some that we have, have talked to and they have seen the light in it and it has, and, and has changed. Now, when it comes, like, the, like Bishop Oginde says, when it, comes to, when it comes to the worship, when it comes to the worship, there are different ways of dealing with, dealing with the situation. And my, my, my sound people, my sound people have, 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 a, have, a, word, have a, a word from me that there is a signal I will make and they will put off the PM. If a politician comes okay. to our church mm -hmm. and and speaks in uh, uh, there's something that I don't like, I will just do something, and the people from the uh, the sound will know uh, I, I don't need, want this, and they will cut off the PA, and then it will switch on my mic. I will always have my mic, 
and I will rise up and say, okay, and change this, the change the mood of the of the service. So some of them will listen, others will not listen. Some of them will listen, others won't. Bishop Oginde, coming back to you, should the church in Kenya, and, and I guess I should also give you both a chance to define the church in Kenya because there's mainstream, uh, there are some others that are you know, more under the minority category, and it might be hard to get a message across to everyone. Should it have an official policy on fundraising? And I'll give you an example. In 2019, we saw an incident where a Catholic diocese somewhere in Muranga canceled all events where politicians had been invited. There had been a service where a fight had broken out, uh, and this was under the sort of guise of a fundraiser. Uh, Bishop Ogene, let's start with you. Should the church have an official policy in this country on fundraisers? Because this has been one of the most controversial issues, I must say, especially in the last year or so. Uh, it's, it's very difficult because, uh, like, like you said, uh, while you are reading one of the uh, messages, contribution from the uh, viewers, mm. that uh, with the freedom of worship and uh, freedom of association, we have ch many churches and, and they are individually registered as independent societies. So it's difficult to have a blanket uh, regulation that determines how people get their funds and how people receive monies from whichever sources they do. Uh, it would be a very good thing if we had a way of uh, managing or regulating how uh, the churches receive their monies and, 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 and under what circumstances. But I must confess it would be a very difficult thing to regulate under the current circumstances. I think the most important thing for us is to appeal to two groups of people. The first group is, as I said, it is we as church leaders, irrespective of whether you are mainstream, uh, I don't know what the other opposite is, uh, because church is church and church belongs to God. Church does not belong to an individual. All of us are serving the same God. We have been called by the same God. So there, I don't have a church of my own. Even if I was the founder of, of it, you are accountable to God for that congregation that he has put in your hand. So the first appeal is to us as church leaders. Let us take charge of our uh, pulpits. Let us take charge of our congregations. And let's not allow our needs to drive our, uh, uh, the way we, we conduct ourselves. The fact that somebody comes with big money does not mean that he's better than the person who is giving less. Jesus made that very clear. The second group that we must talk to is our political leaders. And I want to say this with all sincerity and due respect to the highest people in the land, whether it is the president, the deputy president, the ministers, all kinds of political leaders, we want to tell you, please honor God. Don't go into God's house, use your authority, use your power, use your resources to defile the altar of God. You submit, you subject yourself to the judgment of Christ and the judgment of God. And whoever you are, whether you are the president, the deputy president, you are a CS, you are whoever, you are a politician, don't defile the platform of God. That church does not belong to that poor pastor you are seeing there. It doesn't belong to that poor bishop you are buying with your money. That church belongs to God. And I'm very angry about it. People cannot abuse the place of worship simply because they have money that is more than everybody else. It is not right. It is dishonor and disgrace to God. And one, and one thing that comes to mind, of course we know that churches have needs, uh, Bishop. Where do you draw the line between someone who simply wants to help a church in their home area, and, and I know many people take that as a sign of having given back to their church, their community, whether they are politicians or not, and this other behavior that has become a talking point in this country. Briefly, in your view, where do you draw that line? Because it's also not Jesus, wrong to give. Go ahead. Let, let me tell you, uh, Maura, <laughs> Everybody is free to give to God. But Jesus made it very clear. When you come to give, let not your right hand know what your left hand is doing. We practice this in our church. And we get big monies. We get small monies. 
you don't hear this kind of chaos where people abuse. We pass around a bag. If you have 10 million shillings you want to give us, put it in the bag. God has seen it. He will bless you. But this thing of using your money to defile the house of God is not right. So we are not uh, saying that money should not be given to church. God is, uh, God's work is propagated through funds and fundraising. That is perfectly okay. But the fact that you have money, don't use that money to disrupt the house of God, to defile the house of God. That's all we are saying. So we have received money in our church, but we do not make noise about it. Some of our congregants give loads of money. Mm -hmm. I have no idea who they are because they put it in the offering bag, but the God who sees in secret rewards them. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to come and show us what you are giving? Why don't you just come and give it secretly? Very it will be a blessing to the people and it will be a blessing to God. That is what we are saying. Money is okay. There are churches that could do with a lot of money come and give as you're giving to the Lord, do not display it in the front of others. Jesus made that very clear. You've raised a very interesting uh, point there, which I must give Bishop Karioki a chance to also uh, add his voice to before we take that break. Uh, Bishop Karioki talking about, obviously, the harsh economic times that the country has been in, church leaders struggling to keep their churches open and, and get things moving as well, and politicians who, you know, for some reason or the other, are keen to see what exactly is being given. Let me get your take on this. Uh, one, I, I agree with, uh, with Bishop, Bishop Oginde. It's God who calls. And God has created an opportunity for the shepherds to be taken care of. And they are taken care of by the tithes and the offerings of the people. Now, when someone comes, comes to church, he is coming to worship. And giving in, in, in the Christian circles is a way of worship. So you cannot prevent somebody from worshiping. When they bring in their money and they are worshiping, they are worshiping God. I think for me that that is uh, that is that is perfect. Now, uh, so this this discussion is coming because of a few things that have happened. It is important for us to identify the things which have happened because uh, so that we can uh, we, we identify them and separate them for when you think about the skirmishes in moranga the skirmishes in moranga did not come up because of the offering or because of the money the skirmishes in moranga came because there was there is of political difference so what we should avoid is politicians bringing their political differences in the church mm -hmm. because that's where the, the where, where the problem is but when it comes to when it comes to, to to giving everybody is free to give freely you have received freely you give freely you uh, you give therefore we give everybody equal opportunity i ag they are, i agree even when they were putting up the temple when we were putting up the temple, Moses told them, bring in the gold and the silver. And they brought in willingly everybody as, they, as one wills. So giving is as one wills. But don't forget also that even in the church, there's come up some false prophets or some false servants of God or some false pastors who have capitalized on money and made money everything. So whatever they do is out to collect to collect money and have received money. And this has made people think that the entire church is like that. It is not right to condemn the whole church because of one or two individuals mm. who have abused the opportunity to give. There is drug abuse. The fact that a drug has been abused does not mean that that drug has lost its power. For example, there are, there are churches where, or there are places where if you mention the seed, you will be seen as if you have come from hell. But you, just because some people have abused the principle of the seed. But it is important to understand that God put multiplication in the seed. The power of multiplication is found in the seed. So now when somebody says, I'm planting a seed, it is, uh, it is like uh, something, something uh, you don't want to even to touch. 
but it's just because somebody has abused. Let us not judge the church from the abuses of a few individuals. Let us realize that the church belongs to God. And even Jesus said in, it is in the scriptures that in the last days, false, false prophets and false preachers will come. Mm -hmm. and they will be preaching after their own stomachs. They will be there, and they were there even in the days of Jesus, in the days of Paul. So we cannot get, get, them, get rid of them, but let us realize that the church is the church and cannot, cannot be destroyed by the abuse of mankind. That will, that will help us. At the same time, mm -hmm. at the same time, mm -hmm. the, the, pro, the, 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 the announcement that, that, that I have brought this, it, it's, it, it's not important. It is important, not important. You receive, you bring what you are, you are bringing. Mm -hmm. We receive it in the name of the Lord. And it is God who blesses. It is not the pastor. It is not the congregation. It is not the deacons. It is God who blesses. And he blesses as a result of giving. And it is freely, free giving. Very interesting comments there. Bishop Mark Karioki and of course uh, Bishop David Ogende. We do need to take a quick break. When we come back, nevertheless, uh, still got one or two things to talk about. The state of democracy in our country. The a time was when the church was known for its critical role in pushing for opening up of the democratic space, uh, multi-party democracy, justice. Where is the church of the voice now? Especially when certain political function, factions say that we can no longer freely move around the way we used to. Uh, we're, we're not enjoying the democracy that we should have. Where is the church of the, the voice of the church in that. Also, a National Prayer Day coming up very soon, should be on the 10th of October. What should the message of the church be to the nation? And also, 2022, two years away, not too near, not too far as well. Could the church be the key hunting ground for votes? And what does that mean for the Church of Kenya today? That's what we'll be discussing when we come back. I'll also be looking at your feedback. Someone saying here, some bishops are politicians. They are vying for positions. Of course, they won't stop other politicians from campaigning in their platforms. Uh, someone says, no politics in the church, period. You don't even give us your name. And another one says, has the political class lost respect for the church? Is that why, is that why they are so comfortable uh, making it a hunting ground for 2022 votes? That's what we're getting on 22422. Do we have some tweets? Or if not, okay, one or two. Okay, let's take that break. I'm told we take a look at them when we come back. You're watching the Monday Report. Stay with us. We'll be right back.